Hi, I'm Cliff Hildreth, broker owner of the Hildreth Group. I ran across an article in Realty Times by Ardell de la Logia, and I thought it would be good to share some of the main points with you. It's called the top 10 obstacles to selling a home. Now some homes sell quickly, some don't. For a home that doesn't seem to be attracting offers, the sellers often wonder why their home is staying on the market longer than other similar homes. Well, frankly, in most instances, it's because the home is just priced too high. But there are other reasons that a seemingly good home is not selling. Many times, it's because the home is not prepared properly for sale. There are some very typical problems that some homeowners fail to recognize or fix. I thought I would go over the most common issues many homeowners miss in presenting their home in the best light for potential buyers. These are the things I, and most other realtors, see frequently, unfortunately, and consequently what I always educate my sellers to avoid. For those of you who remember David Letterman, he always had his nightly top 10 list. So just for a little fun, in David Letterman style, let's list the top 10 things that make a buyer say, let's get out of here when I'm selling a house. Number 10, dead bugs laying around. Almost nothing creeps people out who are viewing a home for sale like dead bugs lying around. Often people will fumigate a home after moving furniture out and then put it on the market vacant. The problem is that after the exterminator treats a home, dead bugs can continue to appear for weeks afterward. And with no one living in the house, you find the dead creepy crawlers lying on the carpet or whatever when you come to look. If you've moved out after exterminating, be sure to check periodically while your house is on the market for dead bugs and remove them right away. And also, don't forget to check inside cabinets and closets. I'll guarantee you the potential buyers will. Number nine, the ick factor. You know, those things that make you just a tad nauseous? Like when you open the shower curtain and there's black gunk in the corners of the tub and along the caulk line? or in the grout spaces, or maybe even on the shower curtain itself, or that thick, dense layer of soap scum or lime deposits on the shower door, maybe half-eaten food in a plate on the bedside table or pet food bowls with dry, crusted food in them. You can always throw in dead bugs I mentioned in the previous issue, too. Things like the moldy grout and lime deposits need to be addressed before putting your home on the market. Other things like bugs, messes and cleanliness issues need to be checked every day that your home may be seen by potential buyers. Number eight, major floor squeaks. If a potential buyer finds a squeak in the floor, especially if it's one of their children, they will rock back and forth and play it like an accordion the whole time they're there. Floor squeaks are off-putting to buyers, but the good news is they're usually pretty easily fixable. If it's squeaking under the rug, there are actually special screws to put in right through the rug to resecure the subfloor to the joist. The screw has a break-off head that's removed once the base of it is screwed in so it won't show. Number seven, basic cleanliness. Now this one might seem obvious, but as the saying goes, if I had a nickel for every time I've seen dot dot dot, I would be a very wealthy man. This one is actually unbelievably typical. It would be hard for me to count how many times I brought a potential buyer into a home and found piles of dirty dishes in the sink and pots and pans from last night's dinner still on the stove with dry, crusted food in them and on the stove as well. Pet food bowls with food everywhere except the bowl. Also maybe several days old and dried out. People who see a home with the thought of possibly buying it want to envision themselves living there. If that home is dirty or disgusting, no matter how good the bones of the home may be, the odds are not good that they will see themselves living there. Number six, piles of dirty clothes. This sort of goes with the last one, but it's so common that it deserves a category of its own. Pick up your dirty clothes. No one wants to come into a home and see dirty clothes lying on chairs, on beds, on floors, sometimes on the bathroom countertop where the toothbrushes are. Once someone sees your dirty underwear on the sink, they can't unsee that and consequently may not be interested in buying your house. Number five, the big dog barking. You ring the bell and no one answers except the dog. He's barking and growling on the other side of the door as if he's saying, do you feel lucky today? 
If you've given realtors your permission to come to your home when you're not there, lock up your pets. Even if your dog is not dangerous, there's no way of a stranger coming to see your home knowing that. Also, it can avoid dogs or cats escaping when someone opens the door. Number four, a dirty roof. Now, a lot of people don't think about this one. Huge piles of pine needles all over the roof or big mounds of moss growing on the roof and getting into the gutters. Gutters jammed full of pine needles or leaves. If you live in one of those places with beautiful trees everywhere, get out the blower or garden hose and clear them out. Number three, buyer steps in dog poop. If you have a pet, do poop patrol every day. Nothing can sour the purchase of a home like a would-be buyer stepping in mounds of dog poop on the patio or in the yard. Especially when you made him take off his shoes at the front door so he wouldn't dirty your carpet, and now he's got dog poop all over his socks and can't put his shoes back on. Also, if your pet uses a pee pad inside, don't leave a soiled one out. If you put your pets away when you leave, as I said in number five, then put away the pee pads too. Number two, pictures on the walls. Pictures, pictures everywhere. I know it looked great in that Pottery Barn catalog when they took a whole wall and covered it with all different sized pictures in big black frames. Long ones, tall ones, short ones, and wide ones. When you look at a wall full of family pics, you see precious memories and the great history of your family. Do you know what the potential buyers see when they look at those pictures? They see the hundred holes that will be left in the wall when you move. So, since you're going to have to pack them up to move anyway, go ahead and remove the pictures and patch the nail holes before putting your home on the market. Let the potential buyer envision their pictures there instead. And finally, number one, odors. If you open the door and there's a strong smell of any kind, it's a problem. That doesn't just apply to pet odors or mustiness, but also things like bleach, vinegar, or pine cleaners. By the way, the smell of cigarette smoke can be an instant deal killer. Now generally this mainly applies to bad smells, but if someone is allergic to perfumes or just sensitive to strong odors, it's best to apply this to overly sweet smells too, like rose or floral scents, carpet fresheners, maybe the wall plug-ins, room fresheners as well. And don't forget food odors either. If you made curry or fish last night for dinner or some other food with strong odors, air out the house before you leave to avoid this issue. You may find these things delicious, but others may not. So if you're craving some nice squid tonight, maybe you should eat out. The bottom line is, if there are strong odors, good or bad, it could be a turnoff to some buyers. I've actually had buyers that want to leave even before making it through the entire house. Well, there you have it. Now you may be thinking, what's the big deal if they smell my dinner or see some clothes on the bed? They know these things won't be there when they move in. Well, the reality is that the home buying process is part psychological as well as practical. If someone walks away from your home with a bad impression for whatever reason, it may change their opinion of whether or not to put in that offer. If you recognize one of these issues in your home, it may not be a big problem, but if you have two, three, four, you could actually cost yourself thousands of dollars in the price of your home and also maybe weeks or even months of your home being on the market unnecessarily. The other thing is that these issues cost very little or no money to fix. When you're ready to list your home, do a walkthrough as if you were a stranger seeing the home for the very first time. You might be surprised at what you notice. Just remember, all of these tips are designed for just one thing, to make your home more attractive so it will sell faster and maybe even for more money. So, I hope these tips help you to avoid this issue when you're ready to sell your home. Also, if you like my videos, please don't hesitate to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. And if you click on the little bell next to the subscribe button, you'll receive a notification of any new videos I post. And of course, as always, please don't hesitate to call, text, or email me at the information below if you have any questions about this or any other real estate related subject. Even if you're not ready to buy or sell right now, I'm always happy to help in any way I can. So have a great day and remember, together we can make it happen.